I would like us to cover another functional pattern where we are updating zero or more elements of a list. When I say updating, I don't mean changes in place because we are always in this course only talking about uh, immutable data structures. We will create a new list with the changes. So let's look at this example. I'm going to copy paste it to, an ex to a new file. So I'm going to call it updates.rec. Okay. Um, so what we would like is we have a list of um, floating numbers, right? So we see 1.2, 2.6, and so on. The objective is we would like to convert each element to an integer. Uh, in Racket, there's no distinction. There's just numbers. Uh, but you can eliminate the decimal point. So approximate everything to the closest integer. So in this case, uh, first example I show, if you call exact floor, of 3.14, you get three. It doesn't, so even if you have 3.6, you still get 3. Okay, you don't get 4. Okay, so now what we would like to do is write a function where we do this for all the elements of the list. So how would how do we do this? Well, we could do, it's called list, list exact floor. Takes a list. Conditional. Again, we have to go through all the elements of the list. So this has to be an, a recursive algorithm. We need to check if the list is empty because that's the base case. If the list is empty, what do we do? We return an empty list, right? There's nothing to do. It's a list with zero elements. So otherwise, what do we do? Well, we have the first element of the list. First of L. Let's define the tail to be the rest of the list, right? So next thing we do is we want to, um, we want to, okay, so we have the rest of the list, right? And if we define new list, and if we recursively call list exact floor to the rest of the list, to tail, what we would get is a list with you know, if you have uh, this list, so if our input is this, uh, then head becomes 1.1, 1 .1, right? And the tail becomes um, all of this. And if we recursively call list exact floor, we know that new list is going to be equal to um, two and three magic because by the magic of recursion we assume the if the algorithm is correct then when we do the recursive call we would get the correct results right so our new list will get uh, when we the new list because it result results from computing um, let me just make here very explicit, the rest of the list. Um, actually, no, because we have the variables, so on. Okay, so now what we want to do is, okay, so how do we get back the, the return that we would like? So the return that we would like would be a list with one, two, three. We already have one, two. So what we do, we do cons of age is 1.1. 1 .1, so we need to convert that. So we, let's define, define new age. Okay, and new age is exact floor of age, right? That will return new age is gonna be one. So I want to put new age and new list, right? If I do a cond, I have a list with two, three, I add one, so I get the whole thing. So technically, 
I uncomment this and I run it and I fix the parenthesis, uh, which should be here. Everything works. Oh, <clears throat> okay, so now let me just introduce an error just for the sake of it. I want to do three. I run it and I see here you should have a three, of course. So now it's fixed. Okay, so it seems to be working. I hope you understood how I came up with this function. Um, and this is the code, right? Um, so now the question is the same as before. Can we generalize this, right? So if you think about it, when you have list exact floor, essentially what you're doing is you're applying um, exact floor, right? The function that we wanted to call for each element. So uh, it's the same as creating a new list where we call exact floor to the first element of the list exact floor to the second element of the list and we call exact floor to the third element of the list right so how can we do this um, how can we generalize this well one way is we just make this a parameter right if this is f and it comes from the um, the function um, so if it's a parameter of the function then everything will magically work more generalized okay so let's try to do that to do that so this would be the function that we want to make a parameter. Uh, we'll call this function map. That now takes a parameter f. We call f to the head, or we apply f on on h. Uh, we call this map. We'll put pass f, and that's it. So now, if we want to call this again, Instead, instead of calling, um, call it map. Everything worked magically, right? Because the only thing we did was we just generalized. We looked at the function that we're calling. Everything else is the same. The only thing we wanted to do is wanted to parameterize such that you can apply any function. So for instance, one thing we could do is double the values of the list. So instead of calling uh, exact floor, if you do lambda x, and what you do is take x and multiply by two, check out what happens, 2.2, 7.2, and 6.0, right? It's very powerful, right? Map is very useful in, in REC and in functional programming languages. You always have a map. Okay, so um, this is the generalization. So now I want you to, to look at this um, algorithm. So this is without the interim definitions, right? So it's shorter. Um, is map tail recursive is the question. And let's see, we go through each conditional. So is this a recursive call? No, so it doesn't matter. So it's fine. There are no function calls here, so it's fine. Um, here there are function calls, right? There's, uh, is there a recursive function call? Yes, uh, map is here. This is a recursive call. Is it in a tail position? No, cons is in the tail position, right? So if cons is in the tail position, map is not. That means that the function map is not tail recursive. Right. So how do we uh, make such a function tail recursive? Well, it's not obvious at all. Um, I'm going to go step by step through it, but it will take a bit of time. Um, it's not crucial. It's important that you understand that it is possible. Not really crucial to come up with it because you really can apply it on any algorithm. Uh, the same pattern and furthermore we will learn that there is actually an abstraction a function that you can define that kind of generalizes this technique and we'll see how that works so in the next video we'll cover how to make map tail recursive oops <laughs>